Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here with my review of the Power Rangers Super Mega Force Legendary Ranger Figures Wave 5, also known as the Elusive Wave 5. This wave has easily been the most difficult to find for pretty much the majority of the fandom. Obviously, if you follow my channel, you saw that I reviewed Wave 6 first, because that pretty much widespread came out first. Um, this one has been a little more difficult to find. I was able to find all but Green Samurai at a new Toys R Us that opened about a month ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. But unfortunately, I did not find the Green Samurai until recently, as they began popping up at Targets. The only thing I can say is be patient. Like I just said one second ago, they have been popping up at Targets. I believe some Walmarts as well. Uh, like I said, I found mine at a Toys R Us, so just kind of be patient. Um, I, you should be able to find them, because I saw it at several Targets. They're kind of picked over, but at least I saw that they had them, so yeah. Anyhow, this wave includes the Mighty Morphin White Ranger, the Mighty Morphin Red Alien Ranger, Red Turbo Ranger, Red Lost Galaxy Ranger, Red Time Force Ranger, Wild Force Lunar Wolf Ranger, Ninja Storm Green Samurai, and over here kind of cut off uh, the Red Overdrive Ranger. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the intros, I guess. Now we'll go ahead and do the usual individual look at all of them with comparisons to uh, their past counterpart. Okay, so first up we have the Mighty Morphin White Ranger figure. I should note that this guy can also be found in Wave 6, so if you happen to find Wave 6 first, you might find him. Now let's give him a spin. This is overall a pretty good looking figure. Um, he's also pretty much available in the Legacy line with much more paint, which I will be showing an example to here in just a moment. But still, I think it's a pretty solid sculpt. Some of the proportions are kind of funny, but overall I still find him to be a pretty decent looking figure. I think I still do also prefer the original Super Legends release from a few years back. Um, um, but like I said, it's not really a bad figure by any means. Uh, the only thing that he comes with is his white plastic Saba, which you can see there, which has a little peg on the side so he can attach to the side of his belt, which is kind of a nice thing, but I kind of hate when the pegs are on the weapons in such a way that it's disruptive to the design, especially since they could have possibly included a holster or something like that. Um, and he's doing his Hail Hydra pose for whatever reason. Um, but here we have a quick comparison. First off, let me just show it right next to the Legacy version of the White Ranger figure which is right here and I'll do a zoom in if I get them to stand together right here as you can see this is the legacy version this is the standard version as you can see it's got a much shinier more accurate paint it is an overall better looking figure and if you are choosing between the two definitely pick up the legacy figure version especially since now they have gone down in price to $12.99 which is much preferable to the original um, with a 19.99 price tag. Also, his Saba is fully painted, so for a few dollars more, you can get a much higher quality uh, figure. So I definitely recommend doing that. Um, now, here he is next to the original, let me see, better on this side, I guess. The original Super Legends release, which is quite a bit taller. Like I said, I think I still prefer this mode, ultimately. It does have a little bit strange things in the paint. It is kind of funny in a way, but I still think it's uh, the better one for me, and I just really do like that old uh, Jungle Free mold. All right, now let's go ahead and get some help from a fish cult. All right, here we have the Red Alien Ranger. This is really uh, one of our first outside of its initial wave releases, um, you know, from the original days, which is really cool. I'm going to go ahead and use him as the base articulation demo, since all of them feature the same articulation. The only two which I think differ slightly are the White Ranger and the Green Ranger, because they have their chest armors, which slightly hinder their arms sometimes. But otherwise, pretty much normal fare. You got a 360 hinge joint here, a little single elbow joint here, got swiveling at the fist. You can, can you swivel at the waist? No, you can't on these figures. For some reason, I thought you could. Unless it's really, yeah, I couldn't. I, it's been a while, guys. All right, and then 360 head movement here. The legs are on a nice little hinge joint, ball joint thingy. So you get a nice movement here. Single joint here, swiveling. Um, on some of mine, the legs are a smidge loose. They're not like crazy loose where like I flap it like this and they're like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. But the, a few of them do have slightly looser joints than I would like. Um, and that just is kind of random. I could get a figure that has really loose figure, like really loose legs, and then yours might be completely tight. This is getting really weird. Um, so it just kind of varies. I feel like everyone gets a different version of it. It's just kind of a problem, which I wouldn't like to have, but it's it happens in all figure lines, and it's not a huge deal breaker for me. But anyway, overall, I find this figure to look pretty good. Uh, the last one we got was the smaller, little, skinny Alien Ranger figures which I'll show, which I actually do like. Um, that's going way too slow. Let's speed that up. Um, 
But I think this is a really nice figure. I really do like the molds for these, even though the Jungle Fury mold is my favorite. I think it's a good mold, and I think this is a good representation of the Red Alien Ranger. It's a really, really good looking figure for it, especially since we really haven't gotten much from him. Like I said, the only time we really got figures from it was in the initial wave. Um, and then after that, we really didn't see much from him. So it's really nice to have a figure, um, especially that goes along with these, that's much more updated for a... Uh, uh, season of costumes isn't represented as much. As for what he comes with, he gets his sword and blaster, which I just took off because I thought it would be easier than taking it off him when I was holding him. Um, but they're just pretty much golden, and considering the way they were in the show, it's not as bad. Um, but yeah, those are them. And then, as you can see, they both attach. This attaches to his back. You probably saw at the beginning of the review. Um, here he is next to his original figure release. As you can see, this was done in this sort of... Uh, this was like the bike figure style. I think they came out regular in Japan and they came out regular here, individual released, but they're, they most closely resemble those old bike figures or figures that came with like the turbo carts, um, which I actually really like them. Um, they're not the best, I guess, by today's standards, but I actually still dig them. Um, but still, it's, it's a nicer update, but these are honestly more bad. I, I kind of dug them. All right, now this Alien Ranger's falling over drunk. He's going to have to He's going to have to get help from his, his little buddy here. He's got to get home. Uh, so while they're doing that, I guess we will move on to Turbo. All right, so here we have the red Turbo Ranger figure, which I find to be a really good-looking figure. And I feel like I should have these guys pose differently when they spin around, because like, you're almost immediately looking at their back. But anyway, like I said, a very good-looking figure. I actually really like this figure a lot. Uh, the Turbo in particular needed an update. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second when I bring in the comparison. But I think all the proportions and the paint on him were pretty damn well done. I think he's a really good looking turbo figure. Um, like I said, he's one of the ones that really needed a major update. Um, and if you really like the suit or the character, either one that, you know, inhabited him, I think it's good to have a solid figure uh, of this scale. And I think this is probably one of the better ones in the wave, at least for me, even though um, turbo is not absolutely my favorite suit. I mean, I don't hate him, but, but still, it's just a really nice uh, update to the figure, especially since here is pretty much its main comparison here. This is the original turbo figure release. Let me see if I can zoom out of that. As you can see, much improved update. The only other options, I guess, are the flippable figures, which were also really kind of bulky. Um, and then the the turbo rescue card and uh, lightning cruiser figures, which were similar to the Alien Ranger one I showed you. But still, from the main 5-inch wave, this is certainly a better update. So I can definitely recommend you picking this over this, outside of getting this for sort of a, you know, old-school collector's vibe. All right, so now I guess uh, it's Lost Galaxy time. All right, now we have the Red Lost Galaxy Ranger, and let's spin him so we are again immediately looking at his back. Be good to see his face sooner. Also, a pretty solid figure. The only main problem I have, as you'll be able to see in a second, is that his Quasar Saber, which is just wine painted plastic, has an upside-down lion symbol on it. It is facing the wrong way. But other than that, it's a pretty good-looking figure. The Lost Galaxy suits are pretty basic, so it's pretty hard to screw anything up from the feet to the neck. And I think they did fine on it other than this Quasar Saber problem. And I think the head sculpt is, is pretty well done. Possibly a smidge skinny for the way the Red Lost Galaxy helmet looks, but it's really nothing to write home about that's too, you know, bad or anything like that. And honestly, Charlie Brown Ranger jokes aside, I actually kind of dig the Lost Galaxy suits. Um, it's not one of my favorite seasons by far. I think I'm one of the few that really doesn't care for it, but I really actually like the suits. I think it's the helmets. There's something about the helmets I like, and I have still no idea entirely why, but the original Lost Galaxy 5-inch figures were one of my favorite 5-inch figures lines. I don't know, maybe it's because they have space voices. <laughs> But uh, it's definitely an improvement outside of the Quasar Saber being flipped wrong, but these don't even have Quasar Saber symbols. But um, I do like these older figures. Like I said, for whatever reason, I really like these old Lost Galaxy ones. But definitely an improvement for the most part outside of the flip. It's a smallish thing, sort of, but it's super annoying. Um, but yeah, there. that's pretty much it. Um, now I guess it's time for a time for us. Hat. Get it. All right, now here we have the Time Force Red figure. Let's see if I can outsmart the system. Yes, we are seeing his face sooner. Here he is. Uh, Time Force Red, another pretty good looking figure, I have to say. He comes with two of his Chrono Sabers, which can combine. As you can see there, they both have a peg and then a peg hole. You know, like nature. That was too much, I'm sorry. Um, but that's all he comes with is that. Um, 
But overall, I think he's a pretty good looking figure and a pretty solid update to the original 5 inch version. Um, one thing I will say, which I'll show in the comparison, is you can see there the black on his helmet, which looks fine. But in the show, it's kind of a, a clearer version uh, that has some designs underneath it, which I think that the original 5 inch release replicated quite well, which I'll show off here when he turns around. There we go, he turned around. And then let me show you now. Here is the 5 inch version. I always pull it in when I'm kind of zoomed in, so it's like, here's the 5-inch version's crotch. That sounded really weird. Um, but yeah, a definite improvement over these older figures. They definitely steadily got better back in the day, but um, but still, um, I think a much more natural-looking body. It's not quite as muscular, a lot more natural-looking movement. Uh, this guy can't even do something like that, where he, he bends his shoulder to the side, because there's, there's not much... Uh, it just looks stiffer. Um, than this. This is a lot better movement because he doesn't have the um, hinge joints. But he lights up, there's that. Um, but as you can see, see it's solid black and without even without the lighting up, this kind of replicates that effect. So I think this figure with that effect would have been perfection. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. We got another drunk one. Unfortunately, it's the opposite this time and he's got to carry him home. Alright, let's wild force it up. Alright, here we have the Wild Force Lunar Wolf Ranger, and for one reason or another, I think he might be my favorite of the wave. I think it's a really good looking figure. I suppose it could have a smidge shinier plastic to maybe reflect uh, parts of the suit being shinier, um, but still, I thought they did an overall pretty good job, and this is probably one of my more favorite suit designs, so there is that, but overall, I think it's a really good looking figure. I think the head sculpt is pretty well done. Um, Maybe a smidge funny looking, I guess if I get super nitpicky, but I think it replicates this sort of more slender look of his helmet um, pretty well. As you can see, he only comes with the Lunar Q like that in its sword mode, which has a little peg on the side to attach. Um, and this guy is a definite improvement over the Wild Force figures release. Um, I do believe the original Wild Force figures releases were painted. I don't remember if I had the Lunar Q to show off in my Wild Force retro review, which isn't out yet, but... Um, I definitely had the other weapons, or some of them, but here's the original version, um, and I did like these figures, uh, for whatever, re whatever reason. Um, it's probably a BS nostalgia crap, but, um, the paint is definitely better, as you can see in the color, but these Wild Force figures were kind of awkward with the gimmick, especially him, who is in a very awkward position, especially if his hand was placed lower. Um, but, th yeah, you can see it's just a lot better of a figure, a definite, uh, great update to it, and his helmet proportions were really funny, so, yeah, definite, uh, improvement on update-wise. Alright, now we have Cam, the Green Samurai Ranger, who is the last to join the ranks to be a part of this review. And it's another good looking figure. I feel like I don't have much to say other than, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. I really don't think there's too many errors with it as far as the figure itself. I'm pretty pleased with the way it looks. I think the proportions are alright. Um, the paint looks pretty good on it. Um, I really haven't noticed any, you know, paint splotches or inaccurate paint or strange proportion issues in terms of the helmet. He is in his regular mode. He cannot switch to a samurai mode. He cannot take off his golden uh, armor, which is kind of a disappointment because it'd be cool to put on other rangers. He only comes with his sword, which is sheathed in its little, like, baseball bat cover. Um, so he can only, like, you know, do home runs and stuff. He can't fight evil. He's on, you know, off-season. He plays baseball in off-season. I don't know what Shark Andrew did. That's why he has it. Um, but it's kind of unfortunate that I wish he... Wish? I wish he had had a holstered version as well. Um, kind of like the Super Legends one, which I'm about to show now, had a holstered one right here, which is not only the holster, but it came off like a little science beaker. Um, and then the, you know, sword that came out of it. Um, and yet again, overall, if you can't tell, I really liked the old Super Legends figures. So I definitely, uh, prefer this one. I think the, the figure mold for these was better. This one's actually using the, um, RPM mold, I believe, because it doesn't have those, um... Let me see, I have an example right here. Uh, this is a Jungle Fury joints. Uh, I had the little ball joint things up here, and I believe this is the RPM mold. But those were two of the best molds, I think, in the history of 5-inch figures. And this one overall is pretty good. I think the color on this might be a bit better, I'm not sure, but I still prefer this one overall. But that being said, this is still a really good figure. Um, I think it's perfectly serviceable if you want something in scale and you want something that you can go down to the store to pick up, providing you can find Wave 5, that is. But yeah, there's that. All right, and now we will move on to the final figure. All right, last, the Red Overdrive Ranger figure, um, who I think is probably, for me, the weakest of the set. Not that there's anything terribly wrong with him. I just think that he's the most awkward looking. I think it's his helmet. I think they made it a snidge, a snidge? 
niece, no, a smidge too narrow. And you can see when he's coming around the corner here, he's coming around the mountain. It kind of makes that stick out really weird. Like I know the helmets do that, but I think they squished his too much and it looks super narrow. Everything else looks pretty solid. They really, I really don't have any problems with the body there. It comes with the uh, the blaster there on the side, which you see holsters. Um, but overall, like I said, it's not terrible. It's just the head sculpt gets me a little bit. Um, like I said, the, the little nose thing here is a bit too much. It's a bit too slender for his helmet. I think the most slender one was Blue's. Um, he also comes with the Drive Lance, which doesn't have the little pointy thing sticking out of it. So it's in, I'm gonna pick up things that fell behind a shelf mode. Um, but yeah, he does have that. Like I said, it's not an overall terrible figure. It's just uh, the slightly awkward proportions. And I think in terms of the others, he's just the weakest because of that. And because some of the other ones are pretty good updates to uh, really outdated figures. Now, unfortunately, he's the only one I don't have a comparison to. Um, I do have the five inch overdrive figure, but he is in storage. And the only other one I have was like a gimmick one that came with a uh, armor. But uh, the other one was much more muscular, so I think the overall body is an improvement. But I think I liked the helmet more on the older one, but I'm sorry I do not have an uh, example for that. But yeah, that concludes the individual looks. Now we will get on to the final verdict. Alright, so that's about it. Overall, I find this to be a pretty solid wave. Outside of a few slightly loose leg joint problems and some QC issues such as the, you know, upside down Quasar Saber symbol, this is a pretty solid wave. I would say it's probably one of the most consistent ones in terms of looks for me. I think they all look good. Um, you get some figures, uh, updated figures, and some things that really did need an update. So if you're a fan of this line and you're already collecting it, I can pretty much recommend most of them. They're all pretty uh, good figures in that sense. Um, but yeah, that closes out the legendary figures for Super Mega Force. We'll see what the future holds for that. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's about it. Till next time, make sure you check out the crazy podcast at writersrangersrambles.com. And of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, it's Dawson Writer, signing out.